in your mercy. We give God the praise. We give God the praise. We give God the glory and the honor because he is worthy to be praised. Glory to God. Greetings. Hey, Tammy Nichols, we thank God for you. We thank God for all of the family. Hey, Wes, we welcome you in Marisol. We welcome all of our friends from Chester, Pennsylvania, Lewisburg, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, uh, California, Illinois, Ohio too, Tammy. We welcome all of you to Back to Basics Ministries Online Church. Praise God. We thank God for this new day. This is a wonderful day. This is a mighty day. God is real, ladies and gentlemen. He is real. So we thank God. We thank God. We thank God. I'm looking forward to a great day today. Um, in the next 45 minutes, I'm looking forward to a great time in the Lord as we worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. As we worship him, thank God for this new day. Hey, let's pray, everybody. Let's take a little bit of time right now and pray. Let's pray. Let's welcome the Holy Spirit. Let's pray to him and let's get ready for what God has for us. Father God, we just bless you. We want to praise you. We thank you and honor you. We thank you, Lord, for who you are. We worship you for who you are. You are the mighty God. There is no other God but you, Lord. And so we come to you on this day. We come, we, we give all of our burdens to you. We give you our trust and our loyalty and our allegiance and our faith. And we look up to you, Lord God. You are God. There is no other God but you. And so we come to you giving thanks to you, Father. We thank you. Uh, some of the people online are in areas where there's a lot of ice and snow and it's cold. And But we thank you, Father, for keeping people like Matt Borland and his family. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing in uh, lives of people uh, like what you're doing in, in Wes and his family and in uh, Jen Ryder and her family and so many others. We thank you for what you're doing in foreign nations as people all over the world uh, tune into this uh, service today. We thank you that you are God. You're everywhere and that you care about everybody. And so, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you forgive us of all of our sins. We bless you and praise you and we thank you. Forgive us, Father. We have come short of your glory. We have sinned against you and we acknowledge and confess our sins and ask that you will forgive us and cleanse us of all unrighteousness. And we thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, bless God. This is a new day. It's a, a we're into a new year. And God is moving by his spirit. He's blessing mightily. We just thank God. And I just praise God for you. Thank God that you're, you're taking time out to worship God, that, that, that you're joining with us as we lift up the name of Jesus, as we present Jesus Christ as Lord. He is Lord, ladies and gentlemen. He is Lord all by himself. And he's just wanting to bless you. He's wanting to bless this nation. He's wanting to bless the whole world. God is so wonderful. We just love the Lord and we praise God. We thank God. Well, we want to get into our message today. And um, we, we pray that those of you who are online, you'll stay online after we end our recording and that you will be willing to come and share your thoughts and your ideas, your blessings, even your testimonies. God is moving mightily in your lives and in my life, and we just thank God for you. Praise God. I mean, this is a wonderful day. It's a new day. And I thank God for the opportunity to be the, be the pastor of the Back to Basics online church where we're reaching out, taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations. We're taking the gospel of Jesus Christ to the nations. And we're not trying to compete with the church. We're a part of the church. We believe that we're the body of Christ ought to work together. Some people are legs, some are arms, 
some are eyes, some are ears, some are heads. Uh, there are, we're all here together to work together. There is the brick and mortar church and there's the online church. And we ought to be working together and encouraging one another. Praise God, because when we help you to get saved on the online church, we want you to find a brick and mortar church where you can go in there, help straighten things out, help preach the name of Jesus, help encourage people, lay hands on the sick, start prayer meetings, start Bible studies. And so we're working together. Ladies and gentlemen, there's no conflict here. Uh, we do not compete with the brick and mortar church. We're not trying to divide or separate the body of Christ. We just believe that God has called us into this ministry to reach the lost, the unsaved, and the unchurched. Even in America, in this nation alone, 67% of Americans do not attend church. Well, God loves you. God wants you to fellowship. And God wants people to, like me to reach out to you to remind you of God's love and to encourage you to stay on the battlefield. If you've dropped out of the battle, get back in the battle. If you've dropped out of the race, get back up and get in that race. The race is not to the strong, uh, but to those who complete the course. Get back. Satan might have knocked you down. The church folks may have embarrassed you. Somebody may have humiliated you. Someone may have offended you, but get back up. Get back up in the presence of God. Get filled with a, a fresh anointing of the Holy Spirit and ask God, God, what do you want me to do? But don't just lay there and let Satan mess with you and destroy you and destroy you and your household. You get back up and say, I forgive those who offended me. I forgive anyone who's hurt me. I'm going to get back where Jesus wants me to be. Then forget those things which are behind you and stretch for those things which are ahead. Then press. Ladies and gentlemen, the Back to Basics online church is teaching you how to press into the presence of God. Press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Satan may have done a number on you. He may have afflicted your body. He may have caused confusion. He may have robbed you of your job. You may have lost your home. You may have lost your finances, but you get back in the presence of God because God is our God, not Satan, and put your trust in the Lord and watch what God will do. There was a man in the Bible. His name was Job. Satan hit Job with everything he had. Satan unloaded the barrels against Job and Job was set on the city dump at Gehenna and his wife even told Job, God has forgotten you, curse God and die. Job told his woman, woman, you don't even know what you're talking about. Uh, he said, and Job put his trust in the Lord. He said, I know that my redeemer lives. He had taken everything Satan had put on him. He was sick. He was diseased. Even the dogs were licking his wounds as Job sat out on the city dump. His friends even criticized him. Yeah, see, you thought you were so sanctified. Look at you now. It must be some hidden sin, some hidden sin in your life. But Job hung in there with the Lord. He didn't understand what was going on around, him, but he trusted in the Lord. And that's what God wants you to do. No matter what people think, no matter what your family thinks, no matter what's going on around you, trust in the Lord, ladies and gentlemen. Put your trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let anyone or anything separate you from the love of God. And watch what God will do. Watch what God will do. When God blessed Job and restored him, God gave him twice as much as he had before. Amen. So you just learn how to wait on the Lord. Learn how to wait on the Lord. I know some of you have been set back. Some of you are experiencing difficulties. We uh, pray for you, Terry Chiquito, out in Lakeland, Loveland, Colorado. We're praying for you. We know the enemies has oppressed you, but the devil is a liar. Lord, release Terry from the bondage of the enemy. I'll break that yoke of oppression, God. Rebuke the devourer in the name of Jesus. 
Father God, we just praise you for what you're doing, God, all over the nation and the world. So people, trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. I say blessed is the man that makes the Lord his trust and respects not uh, the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. Speaking of people respecting people who turn aside to lies, let's talk about the president of the United States. The president of the United States. I know some of you came online today with me, uh, came on live, because you wanna hear if I'm really gonna preach that message that I put on Facebook. I put on Facebook, ladies and gentlemen, I, I, I placed on Facebook earlier this week that I'll be preaching on Sunday and my subject will be this. My subject will be Jesus still visits shitholes. My subject is entitled Jesus still visits shitholes. And I know some of you came on just to see if I would say that word, if I'd use that word. That's a vulgar word. That's a word that should not be coming out of any preacher's mouth. But hey, I said it and I, I'm here to represent it and I'm going to stand on the word of God. The Lord gave me this message. I'm going to preach it. We're talking about lies, lies, ladies and gentlemen. We're talking about a president uh, who's divisive, who's racist who's hurting people, who hates people. He's a hater. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about an Adolf Hitler in the White House. Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about the man whom Americans voted. You voted him, you put him in office. And now look at what he's doing. You knew before you voted for him what kind of person he was. You knew he had a foul mouth. You knew he was vulgar. You knew he was corrupt. And, and we've got a lot of preachers going around the country saying, well, uh, President Trump saved. He saved. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says you shall know them by their fruits. Ladies and gentlemen, a lot of people are saying they are saved. A lot of people go to church. People are sitting up in church right now, even either in the brick or mortar church or right here online at the online church or other online churches. And they claim to be saved. But ladies and gentlemen, there's a big difference between being saved and living a life that honors Jesus Christ. A lot of people are talking about they're saved. They're, they they uh, promote salvation. They put on a good front. They have their, their uh, friends thinking they're saved. They've got their relatives thinking they're saved. Ladies and gentlemen, Salvation is not in a name. Salvation is a lifestyle that you get from Jesus Christ when you're born again. When you're born again, your life changes. I say your life changes. If you're saying you're saved and you're still uh, uh, cussing like a sailor, you're still smoking dope, you're still running with your neighbor's wife, you're still selling crack cocaine, or methamphetamines, you, you, and, or you're still lying, you're still cheating, or you can, you're still sitting up in the White House denouncing people and calling people everything, but uh, a child of God, if you're doing this, then you need to be born again. You need to be born again. So ladies and gentlemen, yes, I'm going to preach what I said I was going to preach. I promised on Facebook I would preach and my subject today is Jesus still visits s-holes, s-holes. He still visits s-holes. Ladies and gentlemen, the president, we've got an ignorant and a corrupt president. I'm not denouncing him. I must support him. I must love him. I'm under heavenly divine orders to obey those who have the rule over me. But I'm a preacher, ladies and gentlemen, and I must say what thus saith the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, Americans, you voted him into office, and many of you voted for him because you were tired of eight years of a black man leading this nation. And we knew in 2009, when Barack Obama was, inaug was inaugurated, that the Congress, the leaders of this nation, all across this nation,
people said, I'm not going to support this black man. And we know that was the mentality for eight long years. You sat and you waited and you waited for your opportunity. You waited for your opportunity to get rid of that black man. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, Barack Obama was not one of my favorites. He was not one of my favorites. He did more to lead this nation towards Islam and, 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 and to lead this nation away from Jesus Christ than any president I've ever known. But the thing is, many of the people in this nation and the leaders sat down, said, I will not cooperate. I'll just wait until the next election. And you had to wait until 2012. You had, you had to wait until uh, 2012. When 2012 came around, you had to wait till 2016. And so in 2016, you had a man running for office, corrupt, a womanizer, gross, pathetic, uh, 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 a man who grew up in the cesspool of life. And everybody knew what kind of person he was. And yet he won. He won the election. He won the election. So, ladies and gentlemen, what we have in the White House is just a symbol of what's in the heart of many of the people in America. You chose this corruption, and then you're going to reap what you're going to sow. But, ladies and gentlemen, we don't have to accept what we're getting. We don't have to accept a president who denounces one-fourth of the world's population, calling them shitholes. We don't have to uh, support a president who denounces uh, countries that are less than the United States, who have not uh, been become as fruitful as the United States, who have not been blessed like the United States. But we've got a responsibility, ladies and gentlemen, to love people no matter where they are and no matter where they come from. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a shame, it's a sin and a shame. It's a high embarrassment to have our president speak publicly and, and, and among other leaders and to mouth off that he doesn't want people coming into this nation who come from shithole nations. Ladies and gentlemen, his mama came from a shithole nation. His grandmama came from one. But yet now that he has arrived and he's prosperous and wealthy, he can say anything he wants about other people and he can denounce other people. Ladies and gentlemen, when the president said this, he slapped a lot of us in our faces. Not only did he embarrass people of color, but he embarrassed white folks who are people of goodwill, who really love this nation, who have in their heart a desire to see this nation grow and see other nations grow. Ladies and gentlemen, when the president opened his mouth and said, we don't want any more of those people coming from those shithole nations. Why can't we receive people from Norway? Ladies and gentlemen, Adolf Hitler just stood up in the White House. That's the same kind of mentality Adolf Hitler had in the 1930s. Uh, I don't want any more of these dark-faced people, these people of color, these poor people. I don't want any more of them coming into this nation. Let's build a wall. Uh, keep the Mexicans out. Keep the Salvadorians out. Keep the people of color out. Let's build a wall. Let's make America great again. Ladies and gentlemen, America has never been great. We have never been a great nation as long as there is hatred, as long as there is corruption, as long as there is uh, putting down of others, as long as there is prejudice, racism. We will never be great. But when the president said, let's bring people in from Norway, He's saying, let's bring, bring in people like me, people whose skin is white, whose eyes are blue, whose hair is blonde, even bleach blonde, color blonde, like uh, Donald Trump. Let's bring people in like us. And, and he put down people of color. He put down the poor. 
uh, one fourth of the world has seen this as an affront and embarrassment. Ladies and gentlemen, we're the world's leaders. God has made this nation a great nation. We have a responsibility to help build up the rest of the world. To be the president of the United States means you have been blessed to be the leader of the greatest nation on the face of the earth. And out of your mouth ought to be words that build people up and not tear them down. And one of the saddest things I see in this nation is the fact that we've got some thin-skinned, uh, prejudice, flag-waving preachers. I put my flag tie on today just to let you preachers know, let you preachers know, you ought to be preaching Christ Jesus. You ought to be preaching holiness. Some of you are hiding behind uh, the flag. You're waving the flag. You hate people of color. You hate people who are less than you. You don't even want them in your churches. You don't even welcome them. But Lord, Lord Jesus, we pray in the name of Jesus that you'll move so mightily in this nation. Lord God, we know there are ministers, preachers in this nation who, who joined the Republican Party eight years ago and said, we will not support Obama either. We'll wait till we get our own person in and we're going to take America back. And for the last eight or not, nine years, there was a movement to take America back. It didn't matter who ran for the Republican Party. Deputy Dog could have run. Woody Woodpecker could have run. Donald Duck could have run. Daffy Duck. No, not Daffy because his, his face is black. Uh, 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 not even Mickey Mouse. The Roadrunner could have run for president and the people would have voted for him. Ladies and gentlemen, it's sad when we get a when we get a president who is so stuck on himself, so thinks he's so high and mighty that he's above God, that he can grovel women, grope women. He can say anything that comes to his mind. He can do whatever he wants to do because he's the president of the United States. Ladies and gentlemen, the day is coming. There's a day coming. There's a day coming. But I want to address those of you, not only in this nation, but in your in other nations. Um, I've been to other nations. I do not believe your cesspools. You're not septic tanks. I've been in nations where people are poor, dirt poor. But I've also seen people in these dirt poor nations who love the Lord. They love the Lord with all their heart. Some of the people in some of these African nations and some of these nations in Central America. I've been to Central America. I've been to Africa. I've been to Europe. Some of these people love the Lord Jesus Christ and their love for the Lord Jesus Christ would make the average American Christian to feel ashamed ashamed at the way we call ourselves Christians and live like we don't even know Jesus. I've seen people in some of these nations who love the Lord. They don't have food to eat for the next day. They, some don't have a house to live in. Some don't have good sewage systems. I've seen sewage running down the streets. I've seen sewage in the ditches. Uh, I've seen sewage in the holes behind their houses. Ladies and gentlemen, yes, there are people living in countries where uh, it would seem to be like a cesspool, but ladies and gentlemen, don't let any president, anybody put you down. You are not the off scouring of a cesspool. You are not something that has been flushed away from humanity. God made each of us in his image. God loves us. Some are more privileged than the others, but God made us all and he loves us all. Ladies and gentlemen, when I was a child, 
we had an outdoor toilet. It was a little house that sat on top of a deep hole. Under that hole, in that hole, was a septic tank. We were blessed to have a septic tank. That means all of our defecation, all of our waste wound up in the septic tank. And every now and then, that septic tank would get overfilled. And you could tell it was overfilled because sewage would seep up above the ground. Ladies and gentlemen, we had people, a couple people in the community, they had tank trucks. My cousin had a tank truck. We called it the honey dripper. The honey dripper went around, ladies and gentlemen, and the honey dripper cleaned out people's toilets, their septic tanks. We're talking about outdoor toilets. We're talking about 60, 65 years ago, outdoor toilets. That was before we became sophisticated, where we got these soft cushion commodes that we have in our houses today. We're talking about outhouses where you, you we didn't even have toilet paper. We use the yellow pages of the phone book. We use the Spiegel's or Sears magazine. We use the daily newspaper for, for, for uh, toilet paper. But ladies and gentlemen, there were times when the septic tanks would get overflowed and, and that sewage would seep up on top of the ground. And, and that yard would start stinking. And then if you got other neighbors having the same situation, you had an overflow of sewage in your community. And so the honey dripper would have to come and suck out the sewage tanks and then take uh, the truck and go and bury it in a field somewhere. My cousin owned a honey dripper. His business was sucking out people's sewers, people's septic tanks. The sad thing is, when I was about seven years old, uh, my cousin, and he was in his 30s, he died. He fell into a toilet hole while cleaning out a septic tank. He fell into the toilet hole and he died. That must have been a horrible, terrible death. And it saddened a lot of people. That was his job. He did his job faithfully, but he fell into a hole cleaning out a toilet and he died. Ladies and gentlemen, the president, when he opened his mouth this past week and denounced so many people and he spoke, the sad thing is he spoke on the behalf of a lot of Americans, when he says, we don't want you people here. We don't want people here from these shithole countries. Ladies and gentlemen, that was an affront to me. My people did not volunteer to come to this country. Slave merchants, slave traders went into Africa, into the shithole countries and stole my people and brought them here to sell them as slaves. Even since that time, people, people have not, peop, even since that time, there are people who go through all the world and they look for people whom they can put down, denounce, make slaves out of them, make uh, sex slaves out of them, economic slaves. Uh, American businessmen have gone throughout the whole world and they uh, uh, hire cheap labor from a lot of these shithole countries. But yet we have a president, now that he's elected, he wants everybody to look at him as though he's God. He's been elected and he forgets where he's come from. He, he forgets that his grandma and his mama came from shithole nations. He forgets who put him in the office. A lot of people who voted for him in this nation are good Americans whose 
forefathers came from shithole nations. These are people who believe that America can be great again. I believe that America can be great again. I, I, I look at many people who've come from African countries, uh, South American countries, Central American countries, European countries, uh, Caribbean countries, and who, who've given all they had to get to the United States. Some have come here by lottery. Some have come here uh, by using whatever means necessary. There are people all over the world trying to get to America because they believe this is the land of opportunity. This is a land where people can grow. This is a land where people can be free. It's a sin and a shame to have sitting in the White House the so-called leader of this nation to expound the filth and the garbage that he does expound. But ladies and gentlemen, it's not the filth and garbage that comes out of his mouth. It's the state of his soul. It's the fact that he represents a lot of people who think the same way. You see, when you go to the bathroom or to the latrine or to the cesspool or to that hole in the ground or behind that tree in the woods and you defecate, you're relieving yourself of that which is in you that if you don't get rid of it, it'll kill you. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a president sitting in the White House who's full of S-H-I-T. He's full of it. It's running out of his ears. It's running out of his eyes. It's running out of his mouth. You can tell he's full of it by the words that come out of his mouth. Ladies and gentlemen, the president of the United States is just a symbol of what's happening in America. America has become so full of it, so full of racism, so full of, 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 of hatred, so full of venom, so full of this and so full of that. America has become so full of it. We need to repent. We need to repent. Now, some of you are online, you don't like what I'm preaching. I'm sorry. You need to go back and get this tape from the beginning and get with the program. I make no apologies for what I preach today. The problem with America is we're all sick with sin. We're all cesspools. We're all s-holes, every one of us. That is why Jesus hung and died on the cross. Ladies and gentlemen, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Ladies and gentlemen, listen to me. I'm not denouncing the president. I'm praying that he'll clean up his act. I'm going to ask God in a few moments to flush the White House, to flush all of the S-H-I-T out of the White House, to flush it out of Congress, to flush it out of this nation. Why am I going to ask God to do this? Because it's poisonous. It's evil. It's corrupt. It's corrupting a lot of people. Ladies and gentlemen, God in Noah's day, looked at the world and saw that the world had become a major cesspool. All of the people in the world had turned against him. They were sinning. They were doing everything they wanted to do. The world at Noah's time had become a huge shithole. And God decided he would do something about it. Ladies and gentlemen, you need to read your Bible. You need to read your Bible. And God was so affected by the stench 
of the defecation of the world and how low mankind had gone and how they had turned their backs on him. That God told Noah, build me an ark. And God told him what animals to put on the ark. And then God told Noah to shut his family in on the ark. I'm going to destroy the whole earth. Why? Ladies and gentlemen, why did God destroy the world in Noah's day? Because the world had become a giant asshole. I don't like using this term, but the world had become a giant cesspool, a giant septic tank. And the world needed a flushing. And God sealed Noah up in that ark. And God began to flush the whole earth. Ladies and gentlemen, Genesis chapter 6 tells us God flushed the whole earth. The whole earth had become corrupt. Ladies and gentlemen, sin not only corrupts people, but sin corrupts the earth. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 that the earth is regurgitating, waiting for redemption. The earth has been corrupted by the sin of mankind, and the earth waits redemption. The earth is groaning. That is why we have so many earthquakes, so many tsunamis, so many fires, forest fires, catastrophes, floods. The earth is saying, I can't take any more of this. I'm filled up with it. I can't take any more. And the earth every now and then has to erupt in an earthquake or in a tsunami or in a flood or in a forest fire. Ladies and gentlemen, earth is regurgitating because of the sins of mankind. And we have a man sitting in the White House who represents that kind of corruption, that pride, that he's above God now. He's above the people. He's above y'all who come from cesspool nations. And he want, it, we don't even want you around. Why can't we have people from Norway, you know, white, blue-eyed, blonde-haired? Ladies and gentlemen, when you take a look at it, it is not the people from these so-called cesspool nations. Because I've rubbed shoulder to shoulder. I've been with a lot of them. I've visited a lot of these countries. I see more Jesus in a lot of these nations than I see in the United States. I see people who have nothing worshiping God and obeying God. And I see preachers who have nothing some don't even have houses to live in. I see them going forth. Oh, my friend Elijah, our Bishop Elijah, who represents Back to Basics Ministries in Kenya, oftentimes doesn't have a place to live, but he still goes about preaching the gospel, telling people about the love of Jesus Christ, and people are getting saved. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a danger in following and supporting a demagogue who spews out feces, defecation, and garbage from his mouth, who puts down other people, who has no respect of God, but yet he calls himself a Christian. What is sadder than that is the fact that so many of you have been deceived because you would rather be politically correct than to be God correct. The scripture says, you shall know them by their fruits. Well, what can we do, Pastor Carter? What can we do? Well, I hear a couple things you can do. Number one, you can ask God to flush the cesspool. You can ask God to flush the cesspool. You can ask him to flush 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Flush out the White House. Flush out the Congress. But ladies and gentlemen, that 
is not the solution. Because when you flush the White House, you still have a population that thinks the same way of the man you're flushing out. You still have a majority population who still feels the same way he does about people from shithole nations. They're just not bold enough to say or speak what's on their mind or in their hearts. So I'm not going to ask God to flush the White House. Because when you flush the White House, there's a trickle effect that would go all through this nation. And the whole nation becomes one big cesspool. But I will ask God, Lord, in the name of Jesus, save our president. Not only our president, save our leaders. Visit them, Lord. Give them a spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of you. Open their eyes, God. Open the eyes of the people. Forgive them of their sins, God. I'm asking you to forgive them of their sins. Give them a new relationship with you. Deliver them from the bondage of hatred and racism. Deliver them, Lord God, from their pride. Humble them, Lord God, from the White House to my house, God and to your house. Listeners, God, touch us all. Deliver us all. Save us all. Let everyone call upon the name of Jesus and then help us to walk in love toward one another. Help us to walk in love with one another. Help us to love those who look different from us who live differently from us. God, help us to look at the world as you look at the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. And Lord, help us to keep on preaching the gospel, the good news that Jesus Christ is Lord that the gift of salvation is free to all. Help us to preach that word no matter what kind of venom, what kind of poison comes out of the mouths of our leaders, no matter what goes on. Help us to keep our minds on you. Lord, you said thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Lord, give the people the mind of Christ. Give the believers the mind of Christ Help us to uh, study your word to show ourselves approved. Help us to draw nigh unto you. Help us to pray. Help us to spend more time in your presence. Help us to open ourselves up that the love of Christ will flow through us. Lord, fill us with the Holy Spirit. Fill us with the Holy Spirit. Lord God, flush us of all sin everything that's evil, everything that's corrupt. Wash us with the pure water of your word, Lord God. And then help us to walk together in love, in love towards one another. And Lord, raise up leaders in this nation. Raise up leaders in this nation who will honor you, Lord God, and will walk in the love of Christ and will be obedient, not divisive spirits, but raise up leaders who will bring people together in the name of Jesus. Rebuke the devourer, Lord. Rebuke the devourer, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Then let me finish with this. I'm sorry about using that word, asshole. But I just have one more thing about it. I'm so glad that Jesus Christ still visits shitholes. I'm so glad that he doesn't look at us the way Donald Trump and others look at us. I'm so glad that Jesus has a heart of compassion. He said, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and opens the door, I will come in and live with him and he with me. 
It was a little over 40 years ago. The Lord Jesus came into my life. Yes, he visited the shithole where I lived. And he visited the shithole and the feces and the defecation that I had become because of my sins, my corruption, my turning my back on God, my pride. But God in his mercy came down to that place where I stank. I was a wretch undone. I was corrupted by sin. But yet in his mercy, hallelujah, he showed me his love and gave me the new birth. He gave me a new life. I was born again by the spirit of God, set free from sin, set free from the cesspool of life. It is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. You pray for your president. Pray for me. Pray for all people. Pray that none be lost. It doesn't matter where you are or what your station of life is. If you don't know Jesus Christ, you're in the cesspool of life. That means you can live at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, or you can have a mansion in Florida. You can live in the Trump Towers. You can have a hill uh, in, in the Adirondack Mountains. You can live in uh, Massachusetts. You can live in California. You can live in Portland, Oregon. If you don't know Jesus Christ, your life is a cesspool. And without Jesus Christ, you're going to be flushed. You're going to be destroyed. It won't be by water. It'll be by fire. And the Lord is crying out to you and to all people to receive him as Savior and Lord. No matter what country you come from, no matter where you live, no matter what your economic status is, no matter what the color of your skin you need to be born again. And God wants to give you that new birth. Why spend your life living a lie? Because you've got some money or your hair is blonde or your eyes are blue or, or, or you've got uh, uh, a financial empire. Why live your life depending on that to save you? It won't save you. You must be born again. And when you're born again, ladies and gentlemen, when you're truly born again, fruits are manifest in your life. Hatred should disappear. Division should disappear. Putting others down should disappear. So a lot of people are saying they're born again. They're Christians. But are they? Are you truly born again? You can be born again today. And if you're not born again, ask Jesus today, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Savior and my Lord. Tell him I repent of my sins. I'm sorry. Forgive me, Lord. Cleanse me of all iniquity. Then ask God, fill me, God, with the Holy Spirit. Fill me with your love and show me what you want me to do that I may teach others about you, that I may be, live a life of holiness and righteousness, that people will see the fruits of my life and give you the glory, God. In Jesus' name, amen. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. Glad to have shared the message with you today. All these words were not my choosing, but I thank God for letting me. Say what thus saith the Lord. Give your life to Jesus. Don't cross over to the dark side. Don't fall for the rhetoric coming out of Washington, D.C. or out of your state capital or even out of your household. If it is not of the Lord, do not accept it. Trust in the Lord 
with all your heart. Humble yourself before the Lord. Humble yourself before the Lord. Get saved. Stay saved. Get born again. And if you're already saved, get the hatred out of your heart. Get the venom. Get the poison out of your heart. Repent. Ask the Holy Spirit to cleanse you. That's why we teach the Bible. That's why we pray together. We seek God. We need God. We cannot make it. Righteousness cannot be legislated. Righteousness is not something that comes with political correctness. We need Jesus Christ. Whether we live in Kenya or whether we live in El Salvador or whether we live in North Korea or whether we live in China or whether we live in the United States of America, we need Jesus. We declare Jesus Christ is Lord. God bless you. God bless you. We're going to stop our recording and we're going to ask our uh, go to meet me friends to stay online and